guys, Lug Bells here, and welcome back to my Star Wars series. We are finally, finally at the end of my Star Wars series of reviews leading up to The Last Jedi coming out next week from today. I cannot believe uh, those words just came out of my mouth. The Last Jedi is coming out next week. That's, that's awesome. I can, I am so excited. Anyway. Uh, for the last review, the very last review for my Star Wars series of reviews is going to be for Return of the Jedi. And just like every other review I've done for every Star Wars film leading up to The Last Jedi, this one is, as always, is going to contain spoilers. You have been warned. I vaguely remember the first time I've watched this movie uh, back when I was what, uh, doing the whole marathon of Star Wars movies from the, the prequels to the original films of Star Wars. And the first time I remember Star Wars was uh, R Return of the Jedi was very vaguely. I could barely remember uh, my experience of watching that film for the very first time. But I do remember being amazed by how awesome this movie was, by how much I loved it, pretty much everything about it uh, that I thought was awesome. Just vaguely remember that, but I remember uh, really loving it a lot. But after rewatching this movie, now that I am, uh, now that I am uh, adult Logan, this movie kind of has flaws, I will say. It's not really a perfect movie per se in terms of, of which installment in a trilogy is better. So this movie starts off very chilling uh, when uh, Darth Vader makes an unexpected visit to the second, the second Death Star, and he was shocked when he was told by Darth Vader that the Emperor will be also visiting to uh, the second Death Star very soon. The Emperor is coming here? That is correct, Commander. And he is most displeased with your apparent lack of progress. We shall double our efforts. I hope so, Commander, for your sake. The Emperor is not as forgiving as I am. So then we get to uh, a shot in which R2-D2 and C-3PO are on Tatooine trying to find Jabba the Hutt's palace. They enter his palace and then they meet the one and only Jabba the Hutt. Now this thing looks uh, looks like it's an animatronic. Uh, and do I have a problem with that? Absolutely not. This thing looks like a real thing. It didn't really look all CGI and all that stuff. It didn't look like it, it, it came out of a green screen. Just none of that. Uh, it's basically, that, that thing is animatronic. That is a major plus. And that thing looks ugly, disgusting, and vile. And just everything you can't stand about Jabba the Hutt's looks. And that one shot where he uses the force uh, and uh, to trick them uh, into thinking that he was choking them. That's a really awesome shot, uh, just showing how really awesome Luke was. Luke tries to persuade Jabba the Hutt to make a deal with him, and Jabba the Hutt refuses and send him down to that uh, cap, uh, a Rancor cave, I believe. This thing looks absolutely menacing. Uh, and looks very, it looks so huge, uh, like how could you even survive that if you were even trapped in that Rancor cave or whatever. But then at the end, Luke Skywalker killed the Rancor and that uh, white fat dude uh, came in and saw his Rancor and started crying. <laughs> so Jabba the Hutt uh, had Luke Skywalker be on trial uh, at the Sarlacc pit. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, during this sequence in which a Luke Skywalker ta uh, takes out every single bad guy that is pretty much in, in the command of jo uh, jo Jabba the Hutt, uh, Boba Fett gets to be accidentally hit uh, by Han Solo and then gets sucked into the Sarlacc pit. Now this is something that I actually came up with a a after re-watching this movie. I, it's pretty much going to be the start uh, of this term that I'm going to make up from now on whenever I talk about Re a Return of the Jedi. And that term, I'm going to call it uh, the Boba Fett accident. It's a term that I made up for a character that you pretty much uh, thought was really awesome. They get to do a lot of cool things and then somehow, some way, uh, an accident appears that pretty much killed them off. That's pretty much what 
uh, the Boba Fett accident is. You know, just a character that you pretty much uh, loved and wanted to see more often and wanted to see a lot of things do in a movie that you pretty much enjoyed watching get killed off by an accident. And yeah, that's pretty much what the Boba Fett accident is. And then to another shot in which we get to see Darth Vader uh, kneels uh, to his master, Darth Sidious, or the Emperor, as he was well known as. Ian McDermott as the Emperor was amazing. And it's not just the makeup, which by the way looks awesome uh, on Ian McDermott, uh, but it's also the way he walks and his posture looks, uh, just you know, having that. And the way he talks looks really menacing. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. <laughs> So after we get to see Luke Skywalker arrive at Dagobah to see Master Yoda, we get to see Yoda uh, while preparing for his death uh, after 900 years. We get to see Yoda uh, giving out a few funny uh, lines, one of them being, When 900 years old you reach, look as good you or not, hmm? Y Yoda uh, lay on his bed uh, preparing to die, but before he died, uh, Luke Skywalker asked him if Darth Vader really is his father, and Yoda uh, said, yes, he is. But not only that, he also said to Luke that there is another Skywalker out there, and Luke has a shock on his face, uh, thinking, uh, I have a sibling? So a stolen Imperial shuttle uh, uh, filled with a lot of rebels, including Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia, and Chewbacca as well, and C-3PO and R2-D2 arrived at the uh, f forest moon of Endor. And this is where one of my issues with the movie jumps in. Uh, the green screen, or the blue screen rather, I'm not so sure which one, looks very dated. Uh, it didn't really hold up anymore uh, after me re-watching Return of the Jedi. It didn't really look all that real. It, it, it looked, it seemed like Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and the Scout Troopers uh, were in some sort of a, a blue slash green room uh, filled with a lot of green or blue screens and all that stuff. Uh, and it didn't really hold up very well. And this is where we also get to introduce to the Ewoks. Uh, the planet of Endor, yeah, it, it has Ewoks. Um, and here are my thoughts on this movie. Uh, are they really annoying? No. I would say they're, they're nowhere near as annoying as Jar Jar Binks, I can tell you that. Uh, they're just, they're just okay. They're cute and adorable and they're sweet and, and cuddly and all that stuff. It's just, for me, I feel like they were made just to sell uh, more toys now that I, uh, now that after re-watching this film. Uh, I didn't really think they have a purpose of being in this film. And so C-3PO explains uh, the Ewoks uh, what uh, the war is between the Rebels and uh, the Imperials. And then uh, that one shot where you see Luke Skywalker explain to Princess Leia who uh, both of them really are, that was very emotional uh, and very powerful. I really love uh, that, uh, that shot, uh, that scene, it, it just showing or seeing uh, Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker uh, finding out uh, their secrets and all that stuff that both of them have been kept hitting from each other but kind of knew. So Luke eventually uh, leaves uh, Princess Leia uh, with the rest of the gang and then he gets to see his father once again uh, accepting that Darth Vader was once Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader tries to get him out of it but Luke wouldn't listen telling him uh, trying to convince him or persuade him to go to the good side and, and, and try to leave the dark side behind. And Darth Vader wouldn't listen. So while the rebels uh, get to uh, try to launch an attack both on uh, the, uh, the forest moon of Endor and uh, the second Death Star, we get to see probably my favorite scenes, uh, some of my favorite scenes in this entire film. Uh, Luke Skywalker with Darth Vader and the Emperor. So after uh, the Emperor uh, tried to tell Luke Skywalker to get his weapon, uh, saying, mm, strike me down as your journey towards the dark side will be complete. 
Luke Skywalker turns around facing the window and turns around and got his lightsaber and starts to strike at the Emperor and the Emperor was laughing like <laughs> like he's enjoying it like he wants Luke Skywalker to try to strike him down so that after that Luke Skywalker could turn to the dark side if he had done that. Luke well, was trying to tie Vader out of fighting uh, against Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader refused to, uh, to disobey his master. And that next shot was very chilling and was like, oh my god, he did not go there. Darth Vader went full hardcore on what he just said. Yes, your thoughts betray you. Your feelings for them are strong, especially for sister. So, you have a twin sister. Your feelings have now betrayed her too. If you will not turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. And Luke absolutely lost it. And he went total furious uh, Jedi mode against Darth Vader and starts uh, getting up on Vader and, and just and he uh, he then sliced off uh, Darth Vader's uh, robotic arm off and then uh, uh, Luke Skywalker was about to kill his own father and then the Emperor joined in while laughing and said, "Good, your hate has made you powerful. Now take your father's place in my side." Luke was sh uh, shocked. Uh, looked at his own robotic arm and realized, "Oh my God." I'm turning into him. Uh, I, I really can't do this. Uh, so he threw his lightsaber and said, Never. I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, your highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Uh, the Emperor was like, If you will not be turned, then you will be destroyed. And he starts shooting a lightning out of his fingers. And I was uh, after re-watching it, I was like, Okay, that is pretty hardcore for a Star Wars movie. I mean, uh, that was it. That's way more dark than it needed to be. But you know, I'm okay with it. I have no problem with a, a Star Wars movie uh, being having one really dark moment, uh, and this is one of them. So Darth Sidious uh, keeps on shooting lightning uh, out of his fingers at Luke Skywalker, and Luke was like. Uh, telling Darth Vader to help him, uh, try to convince him to help him, like, Father, please, ah! And Darth Sidious continues, continues, and continues to shoot lightning, and then you see Darth Vader looking at, at Darth Sidious, looking at Luke Skywalker, and then looked at Darth Sidious again, and he starts uh, grabbing uh, Darth Sidious off of the wall, a uh, ground, and then he carries him and throws him into this, 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 whatever it was, and then Darth Sidious died. And then Darth Vader uh, redeemed himself uh, in that shot. So after that, we get to see Luke Skywalker uh, bringing Darth Vader to the Imperial shuttle. And then this is where we get to see Darth Vader being unmasked for the first time in this entire original trilogy. You know, you get to see Darth Vader being much more than just a machine. You actually see him as a human, uh, you know, and being being a father uh, to Luke Skywalker, an actual, uh, a real father, and all that stuff. And yeah, it, it was very powerful. Darth Vader passes away, and Luke uh, just said no words other than, Father, I won't leave you. And stuff like that, and just so the Millennium Falcon and this X-wing fighter uh, destroyed uh, the reactor, and uh, this is when the Death, St the second Death Star, gets to be uh, destroyed by the rebels once again. Luke Skywalker escapes with the Imperial shuttle, and, as well as uh, the uh, Millennium Falcon, uh, piloted by Lando, uh, and getting out of the Death Star immediately before the Death Star explodes. And yeah, the Death Star eventually exploded, and our uh, the Ewoks celebrated, and we get to see Han Solo and Leia, uh, Leia at, each, uh, at a ground of some sorts, and Leia told Han Solo uh, uh, that Luke Skywalker is his bro or her brother, 
And Han Solo, he didn't seem all that shocked, though. I mean, he was kind of like, oh, oh really? Hmm. Interesting. So after uh, the Ewoks celebrated the Death Star's destruction, we get to see Luke uh, in attend uh, to a funeral of Darth Vader. And uh, there was no... And I, I just mentioned this. Nobody in this entire area, I guess you could say, uh, in this entire spot, uh, this entire funeral, has shown up to Darth Vader, except Luke. He's the only one that actually attend, uh, attend to his funeral, uh, Darth Vader's funeral. He's the only one. So our heroes, uh, the Ewoks and the Rebels uh, and Han Solo and every single character that we love and, and pretty much uh, see ourselves looking up to, and uh, including Luke Skywalker, uh, get to celebrate and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, we get to see Luke Skywalker seeing uh, his father, Spirit, uh, looking at him along with Obi-Wan's Spirit and Yoda's Spirit, uh, just three spirits just looking at Luke Skywalker while Luke was having a good time with his friends and all that stuff. And the movie ends. So yeah, guys, overall, uh, I really l l like uh, Return of the Jedi. I don't think it's a perfect movie. Uh, a lot of people don't think that this one is a perfect movie. Uh, it's pretty much the, uh, the uh, our least, my least favorite in the entire or original trilogy of Star Wars. So... I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't like this movie. Uh, and, yeah, I, I will go as far as to say I really like uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, I, I think it's pretty underrated, even though I'm well aware that it's not perfect. It does have some flaws. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm going to give Return of the Jedi a gold medal of honor. So, yeah, guys, I am done talking about the Star Wars movies. I've reviewed pretty much... A few Star Wars movies that I wanted to review, uh, including the prequels. Um, yeah, from prequels to the originals. Um, yeah, I really had a blast doing reviews for Star Wars movies. Uh, the originals and the prequels, even though I'm not a big fan of prequels. Uh, I still had a blast watching or reviewing Star Wars movies. Anyway, there is only one Star Wars movie to review, uh, though one more to review and you know what it is star wars the last jedi yes sucker! star wars the last jedi comes out next week from today that is crazy so anyway guys that is my review for return of the jedi uh the last movie star wars movie that i will ever review in my star wars series leading up to the last jedi if you guys enjoyed my review please click the like button and if you have already watched Return of the Jedi, comment down below to let me know what you think of it. Did you like it? Did you thought it was okay? Or did you not like it? And if you enjoyed what you've seen here and you want to see future videos from me, please click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great week, Battle Squad. And as always, fight the good fight. Oh, and by the way, you might notice... Uh, that I have uh, a dog of some sorts in the background. Uh, I forgot to mention that earlier, but yeah, I have a couple of dogs with me. Uh, this is, hold on, let me introduce you uh, to everybody. Yeah. This is Charlie. Yeah, he, he's my dog. Also, I have Daisy. Y yes. Yeah. So, hold on. Uh, this is Daisy. Uh, this is my sister. Uh, this is uh, my sister's dog. Uh, she's a Yorkshire Terrier, and Charlie is a uh, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Uh, so, yeah, it's really cool. So, anyway, <coughs> peace.